Hi, I'm Jackie Capstick, and this is the Natural Healing Reel. My guest today is Bridget Briez, and she is uh, born and raised in France and came to Canada when she was 25 years old to take on uh, a fabulous uh, photographer's dream. She traveled and she was able to bring light to all the beautiful movie stars and actors, models. Um, anyway, she came across this incredible um, way of just picturing and seeing and bringing light into their lives and, and photographing them and took her around the world. And so um, when you were, uh, you published a book and it was called uh, the living legacy and i was looking at it actually today because i just kind of just got that information and and it, it was quite successful what was that book about hi jackie so <clears throat> uh the living legacy it's about uh, how to really uh age with wisdom and beauty and grace and love um this is all about experience of elderly people. And uh, when I was uh, doing those uh, shootings, you know, I was working for a big company in the US, which name is Lifeline Company, which has been bought after that uh, by Philips. But uh, they sent me all over the US and Canada to take picture of their uh, elderly people. And I went through every different ethnic and social class and everything. So it was an amazing experience for me getting out of the fashion industry. So it was two worlds where in the fashion industry, it's beauty, but from the outside. And the other world was like from more for the inside. So it was like where I am, you know, bringing the beauty of their elderly people to teach us how to grow and to take advantage of all the experience in life to really get that lesson. That's beautiful. It, it was oh, really important. And it changed my life completely, completely. Well, I bet it did because you know what? I think that as we get older, we really realize that wisdom and everything that, that you gain. And, when we're younger, we just don't give that, that respect a lot of times, you know, that, well, I guess maybe we just don't have the understanding of what the elderly are, are carrying with them, right? So anyway, so that was in 2006, you wrote that book. That's right. Um, I worked for that company for more than uh, 13 years. And, you know, like a big uh, corporate company, you know, for Christmas or for events, they always send a gift and pay, you know, either it's a pen or, or a bag or something like this. And I said to the CEO of the company, I said, you know what? I've been recording all those, uh, uh, I interview every people I've been meeting and photographing. And I met hundreds of them, you know, for more than 10 years. And I say, that will be wonderful to do a book a coffee table book and people will, will keep it forever. And they said, but ah, Brigitte, I don't know if people are going to be interested. I said, yes, I promise you. So whatever, I invest my money. I say, if you don't want to do it, I do it. And I believe in it. And uh, he said, but okay, but I will, I have a, a big uh, committee meeting. So, and I have a lot of people involved in that. I need to ask them because we are a public company. I say, yeah, no problem. So he came back three months later and I already start my book to publish and everything. And he said, okay, Brigitte. So everybody accord to do it. And we are taking 6,000 of your copy. But I was ready to print only 3,000 hard copy, beautiful book, you know? And I said, 6,000, <laughs> okay. So I go to see my publisher and I said, listen, I got already 6,000 copies sold. And he said, but we have only 3,000 for the paper and everything. 
He called me the next day. He said, good news. One of my clients has been canceled his uh, publishing book. It's exactly the same paper. So let's do it. So I did and I sold all already my copy. And after that, I did big, big things, being exposition in Canada uh, with that book. I did a movie um, which was uh, seen at the Mondial Ma uh, World, uh, World Conference uh, of Elderly People in Copenhagen in 2008. Wow, that's uh, incredible. Good for you. Yeah, and it was really a big impact on people. 2,000 people. At the end of the movie, they all have a, a, a tissue. So oh. I was touched by it. And in I fact, <laughs> this book is still on a lot of coffee table. Uh, yes, it's on Amazon. I was looking at it today. I was, I, I know I was trying to get a, get a read on it. I have to just order it. Yeah. It's awesome. I'm going to. So it was an, an amazing uh, experience and lesson and uh, teaching for me. Yeah, yeah. And, and so was that before or after you were started to do um, the photography for, for the magazines? Uh, no, I be, in fact, I start, photography has been always my passion since the age of 12 years old. And I got my first camera uh, when my grandfather died. And my grandfather died at, when I was 12. And my grandfather uh, always had a patch on his eye. And I always knew my grandfather with only one eye. And in fact, if I can tell that little story, because this is how I start to develop my third eye. Interesting. So he gave me his only eye, which was my third eye. And in fact, it, if you don't mind, uh, I'm at the age of 12 years old. I'm coming from a very modest family living in Paris and very small room, sharing my room with my two brothers. And uh, when we moved to the Southwest of France, we had a big house at my eyes, you know, I was only 12 and my grandfather was living with us. And I come back from school and the garden was big. And uh, we had a first dog and he was on a big leash. And I come back from school, I call him, he's running, running and with the leash, taking my grandfather by the leg, who was taking some pitch from the tree. He fell down, I scream, my mom is coming, the hospital is coming to pick him up. Two days later, I learn he died. Oh. So in my 12 years old mind, little girl, I killed my grandfather. And I never told anybody, I never told my mom about it, but I was so guilty all my life about that, yeah. that death. And I really was holding his death on, uh, on my shoulder. So I get a lot of insecurity and everything. And when he died during the ceremony, I got a camera. And that since that day, I was taking picture and I could see the beauty of life through that lens. And I could see the world through that lens, but I couldn't see it outside. So I always said that my grandfather gave me my third eye. And when I was turning 40, uh, I went through darkness, you know, a period of darkness. And um, a friend of me brought me to some, some weekend, you know, that I was not spiritual at all. And I never, that was not on my mind, you know. Yeah. And in that weekend, we learned how to put the past behind us. And early morning, so at that time I was living in Montreal and I called my mom at five o'clock in the morning. And my mom said, oh, Brigitte, what are you doing so early? So I asked her to just listen to me because it was very hard for me. I needed to let her know what happened when I was 12 years old and oh. with my grandfather, who was a fa her father. So, and I tell her the whole story about how I called my dog and the dog came and he picked up. And I, I really, in my mind of little girl, I killed my grandfather. And That's my heartbreaking. Mother, you know what? You've been taking that guilt off your life, but you know what? 
your grandfather has a cancer of the face and the cancer was eating everything inside. And that was in the early 72, uh, 1972. At that time, there was not medicine like there is now. And my mom said, you know, the doctor was giving him only two months to live, but it was so painful for him. And you gave him the possibility to die in all dignity. And when she told me that, it was like phew, lightness in my, I took out of things. Wow. Not that, but I saw the courage of my mom because she was taking care of my, of her dad, of my grandfather. I never heard either my grandfather or my mom saying, oh, or, or crying, screaming because it was hurting or telling, oh, it's disgusting. I discovered the courage of my mom. And since that day, we have been like, you know, amazing, 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 amazing discovery. And, you know, and that's why I always said, you know, when you have something to say, just say it. Don't spend years of holding it on your back because it's so heavy to hold. And so, I let I free myself and my grandfather gave me in fact also a beautiful gift during those years. Yes, I was feeling guilt and you know I tried to please everybody to make myself loved. Um, I accomplished so many things. I was always the best. I needed to be always the best of the best of the best. And but he gave me his only eyes. And that was my gift. So since Can that- explain, explain the third eye to people that, explain what you mean by that to people that are not really familiar with. With, with what? With the third eye. Oh, when you say he gave me the gift of the third eye, what, explain that a little. The third eyes is like our potential. And it's us, it's, uh, a, it's bring sorry it's make us see behind the scene like here behind the unheard oh it's all connected you know and that's what gave me like and that's why i became a fashion photographer uh, at the age of i was a modeling i was a model but i all, i was always better uh, behind the scene, behind my lens than uh, in front of the lens. And I could, I could see things. And when a client was giving me, by example, a product, or I had to do a casting with models, I could see the picture before going inside that location. I could see it in my head. I had exactly everything. So, and we were doing the shooting two months later, probably, you know, sometime going in the island to go and shoot. But I was able to, to see the unseen or behind the scene. So it was like, and still now. Uh, so I, I did my fashion photography for more than 30 years. And uh, I, I love, I'm always uh, taking photo and uh, those uh, those photo um, sometimes we said that uh, picture you know um, has no words we we don't need to speak to see the beauty and uh, during all those years my photography has been a way to express myself and express the beauty of the soul in fact I'm I'm the I've been uh, the instrument of consciousness. My body is an instrument of consciousness. And my lens has been the medium of how to express my, the soul, what my soul want to project. Wow, what a gift. Like you've had that for most of your life. Yes. And I, so I've been taking picture of um, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of people, thousands and thousands of people. So bringing their beauty out, 
And after that, I was doing this and more and more and more. It was coming like really coaching people, coaching my client, coaching everybody on the scene. And I said at one point, you know, even when we were taking, I was traveling all over, all over the world. And during those flights, my client wanted to be with me, the model wanted to be with me and coaching them to get out their, their beauty, you know, what they uh, get out, be aware of the shadow to bring the light. So I always said that I was always br br um, bringing people, um, lighting people and bringing on magazine or, you know. Yes. And now I bring the light from inside. So I'm more, uh, I'm more, I'm a coach, you know, I became a coach and um, I, I bring the light inside now. So. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. I was lucky enough to uh, have my picture taken by you when we were on our um, cruise in the, the Mediterranean, the Joe Dispenza cruise. Yeah. We had some fun in that, uh, the room with the lights. I can't remember exactly what they were doing when they were leaving, but I have those pictures still. <laughs> It was like a strobe or something that was going on, wasn't it? We were playing. But uh, yeah, it, you, have, you have a gift. You know, everybody can, um, we, all have a, we all have a gift. Yes. All, everybody. And it's just to believe in us and also to just surrender and to really see our shadow because the shadow is a strength, you know, to cross and to see the light, uh, how uh, beautiful uh, strength. So, and it, we need to go through experience. That's those experience who is going to um, make us able to discover who we are and why, why we are here on that earth, you know? And yeah. And so, and, and now this is even more than before with what happened in the world. It's about time that people really discover who they are because we need them. We need so much people to be uh, in that consciousness to help others to get out of their shadow and to get out of uh, the sleepy uh, mood and to wake up, to really raise up um, raise up who, that consciousness and to raise up our strength and to get with faith and to get courage, determination and go for it. We can do it, you know, because if somebody can do it, you can do it. Yes, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, you're a leader. That, and you know what? And, I, I, you know, just talking to you, I, I, I'm like, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> like I'm your mother or something. <laughs> but it's just, it is, it's inspiring because when, you know, you know, you, I hear that and I, and, and, and you, you're just walking through it and doing your thing. And it, it is, it's, it's inspiring. Yes. And also, you know, this is, we know nothing in that life and that's why when we start entering you know inside that path we want i'm always thirsty to to discover what is the next step you know and it's like breathtaking you know we always see beautiful things and yes there will be challenge in your life in our life and <laughs> lately you know there is a lot of challenge but it's just because we need to go in another consciousness that's it and consciousness it's lightened you know we need to to get out of uh, oh i'm hurt this is my body you know the stories much power that we don't know we have so much to discover uh and it's through challenge you know and to to discover our faith and courage and love, but and love is uh, love is love is love, and and love we need, and that's what really that life. Um, there is a lot to discover, you know, <laughs> a lot to learn, to and but it's how to love, and 
how to love how to love and uh, oh. my mom passed away three years ago and you know she gave me the most beautiful gift uh, to be present to be present at that you know at that moment to be to be there to to look at a person and to give her 100% of our attention to just listen and i was always uh, you know when i saw my mom she when i went back to france to open my wellness center and the bnb uh, my mom so i went back in uh, with my parents after more than uh, 30, 30 50, no, 40 years almost. <laughs> <laughs> Five years, you know, and went back to France. And uh, my mom was always coming to my office, running like that. And I was, uh, I was always saying, oh no, mama, I don't have the time. Please come back in two hours. And the, a year before she passed away, I, I received a lot the message. I knew that she will go away, passed away. But she was in, in good shape, believe me. But there was nobody I could share what the message was coming. And during that year, I took the time. But I saw myself, the old self saying, okay, mama, don't come, come back in two hours. I could see my old self. And when I saw my old self, I was saying, stop, no, no, take the time. Invite That's huge because we can't see ourselves. That's the whole problem I think that we end up with in our lives is we can see what everybody else is doing. But I, I've really been, you know, on that path and I, I know exactly what you're saying. And just even with my kids, right? You know, I'm busy, da, 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 and I still am doing it. But it's a learned behavior for my parents who were workaholics and and I'm sure so on and so on down the, the generational past, but it's huge. That awareness is huge because if you can't, if you can't see it, you can't shift it. No, we need to, to be aware of all our com comport uh, comportment, yeah. how we act, how we move, how we speak, how we eat, how we walk. We need to be aware of everything we are doing. Because if I'm taking my, my cup and I'm drinking, you know, and I'm, I'm speaking at the same time, I need to be aware that I'm taking my cup and I'm drinking, you know, and I'm aware of that specific moment because this is the only time and my mom gave me that possibility to be present because there is nothing more precious as being together with whoever you are but yeah. to have like even with you you know yeah this is a gift this is a gift yes. You know, and it's my gift also. No, <laughs> my gift. <laughs> I love that you're here sharing this stuff with me. And, and you know, I I'm like I'm reading through all of the stuff, and, and you have had a thousand lifetimes in your life. Like it, there's so much to share of your life that it's like okay, what, 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 where do I get to start with here with you? Like it, you know, and. When, uh, when I was young, I was always saying things to my, my uh, friends. You know, I was very, very young. And I was always telling them, like, advice. And sometimes I said, why do I give advice? Where is this coming from? I didn't know uh, until, uh, few, until a few years ago. But, and, you know, sometimes when you hear voices, Yes. But you think, you know, where it's coming from or whatever. So I had a lot of times things like this happening when I was young. But as I was not spiritual, I thought I was, no, spirituality was not my world at that time. 
you know, even as I was in the fashion business, you know, it's only when I had my, uh, um, that uh, I lived for a few years in the shadow and I had that experience with my mom of releasing the death of my, my uh, grandfather because it's really bringing me lightness. It was like you know, an opening, an opening. And after, from that day, I can say that I went through such a very, very rapid uh, uh, experience of uh, awareness of a lot of things. And uh, from um, one of my friend, uh, one of my friend's mom uh, had the cancer uh, of the length. Uh, and I find a healer in Mexico. We travel in less than a few days. Uh, we, I organize everything to go and see that healer and a very old uh, man. And uh, we did a uh, ritual for her and everything. And at that time, the healer um, contact me through the um, uh, Virgin of uh, Guadalupe. The Virgin Mary. Oh, lovely. Yeah. And uh, I had uh, for five days experiencing and Mary embody me. I have no idea of what was that meaning, but I had so much, my, my body gets uh, at a level that he was shaking and sweating. And so, and I had experience with the Virgin Mary and from that point I discover healing and my life change completely yes okay um, everything everything um, it was like my whole life couldn't be the way it was and I could see things differently so wow. I readjust about all this I had to re I was like so in another world and with an elevation of vibration but yeah. my body and my mind needed to adjust to all that experience yes I went through a lot of uh, um, change in my style, lifestyle so I went into spirituality completely and I joined the San Yassin so I a San Yassin what's that? San Yassin you know it's like you know them uh, it's like a monk in India with the red with the uh, yeah. orange robe you know, shave and everything. So I have that time for a few years. I was shave and... Did you? Oh, cool. For a few years. So meditation, you know, for many hours during the day and night. And uh, I was... Uh, my life, imagine from fashion, <laughs> from the fashion, going inside that world. Total extremes. <laughs> so, extreme. so I did this for a few years and uh, and after that, you know, uh, life go on and, and I adjust my, you know, and experience and um, that's when I got, so I go in, I do a lot of silence retreat for myself and I'm starting to have a lot of uh, people who follow me. So I'm starting to do a lot of retreats and at one point, so I was working a lot in Mexico, in um, and uh, Mexico, Canada, and at one point I said I want to open my own uh, space. I want to have my own wellness center, a yeah. well-being center, with people who can stay there. And I didn't want to make it as an ashram because an ashram is more narrow, you know, it's not for everybody okay. ready to go in an ashram, but I wanted to open it for the world. So I, I went to, to France 
and open uh, my wellness center with a BNB, Airbnb. And uh, at that time, so I opened it in 2013. And people in that area didn't know at all about yoga and meditation. Hello? I can hear you, but I don't know if you can hear me. I think it's freeze. Hello? Hello, Taki? Hi. <laughs> I think it's freezing. Yeah, we have to set a little lot, uh, a little blip. <laughs> okay, so so I didn't catch the last few little, like the last minute or two. It was kind of coming in and out. So so you wanted to open, we were talking about your wellness center. Yes. So when I open it in the south France, France, southwest of France. Um, people didn't even know what was yoga or meditation. And I have to be very careful, you know, in France, you know, uh, uh, you have to be, uh, I will say, uh, in France, a lot of center has been closed at that time, you know, if uh, you are too much in spirituality or you have to be careful. Mm -hmm. So I just open and I just speak about yoga. Yoga was accepted, you know? So, and why was that? Why was that? Why was that? Like it's a country if spirituality wasn't accepted or is it because it's... It's just because uh, if it's too spiritual in France, it can be... Uh, strange for people and they don't like it like by example you don't talk about guru right it's the worst thing you can talk in france you know okay so they just don't understand what you're talking about is more probably do you think or just scares them because they don't know or anyway sorry <laughs> so i just talk about you i put yoga you know and uh, but now we have a good notoriety. We are very well known, you know, in all of uh, France and Canada and America. Also, so you know, we are we have a good. Uh, it's open for everybody. And uh, bed and breakfast, right? That you've done. Excuse me. It's a bed and breakfast. Is that right? So you go and you stay, and you have like a bed and breakfast, and you grow your own vegetables and. You bless all your food and the water. Every, I love having dinner with you. <laughs> it's, my dad is, is 83 years old, 84 soon. And he's doing all the garden and it's all bio. Everything is so bio. And um, so people are coming for uh, like three, four days to 21 days. And they have they can have personal uh, retreat or they, they come in holidays as a tourist. Uh, but usually they uh, take, we have a menu, a menu, uh, yeah, a menu of activity, you know? Yeah, the menu, yeah. Uh, you know, from your, your, your beautiful menu. accent, the menu, <laughs> I love it. Uh, meditation, uh, you know, transmission, healing, depending on what is the person, you know? And um, so we have singing ball. I mean, we have all kinds of stuff, you know? And coaching, you know, everything. Everything you can imagine. Uh, so, and we can, so make it personal. Uh, or by group, we do retreat, of course. And um, so it's... Uh, the energy in the center is very special. Yes. Very, very special. Everybody who come inside, as soon as they are coming outside of the street and go inside, they can, and that, it's not me, but it's from everybody. They can hear the silence. Oh, I can't wait to come. <laughs> <laughs> We talked about that when we were away, and I and I I so cannot wait to get back to Europe. First of all, 
And second of all, to go to France and go to your house. <laughs> Except for I said I'd probably be laying on your bed with the dog. <laughs> like, where is she? As soon as the COVID is gone, you know, I'm sure that uh, we'll be able to uh, to do more retreats. This yes. Is, you know, you were well. also traveling with your retreats, like you were having doing groups like in like the Maya and, and stuff as well, weren't you? Yes. Is the so, vortex? Uh, I'm doing retreats since more than 30 years. Yes. And um, uh, those retreats, I do it either, you know, from Mexico to Canada, um, Italy. So now as, as I'm more in Europe, you know, I do it in Italy um, and in, in France in my center. Um, I have a beautiful scenery. And in fact, where I am, and that's why I'm not traveling as much as, you know, not because of the COVID, but I mean, before, the center is such an energy. And we are in an area, the, the place, it's uh, the area, it's Le Lot, L-O-T. You know, that's the countryside. Okay, yeah. It's L-O-T, Lot which means a lot. Which means a lot, abundance. <laughs> okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's really abundance because the nature is so rich. Oh. And as I said, you know, if you have nobody, no, no money, you can go and walk in the countryside and eat all day long for free. <laughs> wow. Amazing. You can wow. go fruits. We have all kinds of fruits, all kinds of vegetables. We are surrounding with so much richness, so much abundance. And, and as I said, it is this, this land is that it's a mushroom who is coming out <laughs> so much. It's not a very well-known uh, uh, countryside of France, but since the COVID, uh, people are coming because we are still a green zone since the beginning. We are a green zone. Wow. We have not been affected at all by the COVID. No case. Interesting. Yeah. So we are, I always said that we are very, this is a very protected area. You're not kidding. <laughs> That's true, but you know, we are, imagine that we are still in a green zone. Yeah, because I don't think, uh, uh, yeah, I haven't heard that from any place, <laughs> right? The, I know here in, uh, in Canada now it's getting ridiculous and yeah. ramped back up to something that unfortunately was kind of like how it was before, but anyways. But we have to keep faith, you know? And Tell me about faith. Tell me about, we were talking about your traveling to go see your daughter and well, have faith. I said, you've got to share. You can't tell me all that story. Share that because it's, it's just everybody's daily lives, right? And, and, and just paying attention and walking through it is, right? In fact, you know, on the 6th of, six of uh, I left France now, now I am in Florida at my daughter's place. She just bought a new place. And um, on the 6th of November, my daughter uh, was uh, uh, declared with the COVID uh, positive. So uh, she, on that day, she's just moving out of her old house and she's moving in in the new place with oh, two her. years and six years old. And she needs to be separate from the kids. So the kids are coming in a house they don't know. They have the babysitter. There is nothing, no bed, nothing at all. So they are, I don't know how she did this, but my daughter was, she's, um, she has a barn on the property, there is a barn. So she was staying in the barn, little, very narrow apartment. So she was staying there for 15 days. So when she, and she asked me, please come and help me because with the kids and, you know, so 
as soon and France is coming with the COVID and we need and they stop everything. We couldn't move. We we couldn't move from the house. You know, they stop uh, the lockout, you know. So I said, I need to leave. I really need to leave. I'm not staying here because I didn't know what will be next. You say, so uh, two days later on the 9th of November, I'm starting to fly. Two, two of my flights I cancel at the last second. I'm at the airport. I am in Paris. So I have to do the COVID test, of course. And I am in Paris and I've been refused to go back, to go to the US to fly. So uh, it, it, it's quite something to be refused to fly. Um, so I don't know if- and You're you trying have... to get to your daughter and your grandkids because they need you <laughs> and you're being denied to fly. So and, there's that as well. <laughs> There is many people who has been in that case that they couldn't go and see their husband or kids or parents. You know, during that year, it's been a terrible year about family experience, relationship that we have been separated. And, um, but on, on that one, you know, I said, as I am Canadian, so I said, the only way I can go through that, I'm flying to Canada, but so, uh, to pass details, you know, for two days I was in the airport in Paris and I couldn't get out because if I get out, I get retest, you know, with the COVID and I just been retest which three days ago. So I had to stay in a very, in the airport, in a hotel a room, very expensive, two yeah. meter, two meter, uh, no window, uh, just a bed that you have to push on a button to lie the bed down and your feet are touching the wall from one side and my head on the other side. And I could touch the wall on each side. And I said, oh my God. And so dark during, you know, because there is no window, nothing. And I said, God, okay, I have, I have to be really positive and see myself already in Florida. So I arrange everything. Finally, my flight to Canada is the next day. And but I stayed two days in, 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 uh, in Paris, in the airport. And I arrived in, uh, in Montreal to take my flight to the US, second time refusing. They said to me, you don't have a waiver to fly to the US? Sorry, you cannot fly. I said, listen, I need to be there. I need to be there. Uh, please, let's see what do I need to do. So I said, okay. So, uh, you, we have to go and see with the chief officer, officer of Washington how we can do this. So whatever, I have to find a place in Canada to stay, but I couldn't stay for more than 48 hours or 72 hours. If not, I needed to do a, my quarantine in Canada. So oh. I had everything to be done before those uh, 48 hours. And so I made some phone calls and the chief officer, officer in Montreal is doing everything and called me back and said, okay, you need to, repass, to pass another test. I said, okay, I'm doing it right away. Trying to find, so I have so many people helping me to find a place to do the COVID test. And I needed to have the test very rapidly as a result. So finally, I got it. <laughs> it was a nightmare to go there, but whatever, I got it. And so I sent the test on the first day morning, seven o'clock, and I took another, my flight. As I, I took my, my ticket as, as, um, as it was normal. I didn't uh, make it, or I cannot fly, or no. I always saw myself in Florida. And I always saw waiver approved, waiver approved. I just saw the name approved. That's what in my mind, I just see that approved. So I, uh, the first day morning, seven o'clock, I received the result of the test, send it to the chief officer. At nine o'clock, I receive an email from the chief officer saying, okay, you are clear to fly, come at the airport. I'm flying to the airport <laughs> and at the airport, they keep me for two hours. So my flight was at 12. They keep me until 11.30 or something like this. And 
So I was with them. And as I was working on my paper, I go and sit on a chair and meditate. And for, I don't know how long it took, you know, for a while. And one, I hear at one point, excuse me, ma'am, are you all right? <laughs> I opened my eyes and I said, oh yes, I'm meditating. Oh, okay. So, and very gentle, he said, you know what? You are okay to fly. Ah, oh, thank you. And I said to him, and that was a chief officer. And I said, you know what? You gave me the most beautiful gift, not only to see my grandchild, to be with them, to take care of them and to, to be with my daughter there. I couldn't be with my daughter because she was insulating, but mm -hmm. you gave me the beautiful gift of faith. Yes. During those five days where I didn't know if I would be traveling able <laughs> Uh, because I've like been, a room with no window, little jail cell. Right? Yeah. And in fact, when I was in Paris in that little hotel in my room, uh, you know, I, Nelson Mandela came in my mind. And I said, God, 27 years in prison. He had so much faith and strength and determination and courage. And that's what keep him to always be able to live that present moment and to see himself, you know. And that's, he gave me that uh, beautiful gift of faith. Yeah. And so my was like an inis initiative, initiative trip journey and uh, so after six days, I arrived. <laughs> Instead of 10 hours, it took me six days. But you know what? Believe in it. Believe in yourself. And believe. Yeah, even though everything in front of you is showing you that it's a no-go, you knew. You but, saw yourself being there. And like, your, and like your photography, right? Yes, exactly. I, I would do the same thing cutting hair. Someone would sit down and I would just kind of like take a snapshot uh, and then I it would just finish and it would be there. Like I could be talking, you know, carrying on. And then, so I, I really get, it, it's important that visual, right? Like to just get oh. huge for creating. We need to see forward of what we can see, you know? As I always say, don't look like like this, you know? <laughs> Just... Well, I don't know that any of us really have been, it's not a society thing to be, to do that. You know, I think that everybody is kind of more in, in the past and in our patterns and our stories. And we're just so, you know, I mean, well, I, I know that uh, we're all trying to be present, to be present with our kids and stuff, but it's it takes work. Like it really, to take hold of uh, and take charge of our minds is is quite. It's an it's like eating well. It's like going to the gym. It it's a daily practice, and I don't know that a lot of us even know that that's what's happening and that we need to be doing that. I know I was never told that. You know, I don't know that it's a, I don't know that it's like a common thing. It's just people just are, are uh, they're running in their brains all the time with where they got to go next and am I going to pick up this and I'm going to do that. And, and it's just such an expression with the energy is so fast and picking up right now. It's more important than ever to, to if you don't know how to meditate, to meditate, right? I believe that we need to unplug a um, yes. few times during the day, even if it's five minutes, but to unplug and to breathe in and breathe out and to be aware of that breathing. Do I, br is my breath rapid? Is my breath slow? You know, to really observe and to feel what I'm feeling at that time. And during the day, it's really to observe how, as I said before, how we eat, how, how I'm taking my car key and go in my car. Do I do this consciousness or do I do this like 
by your routine, you know? Yes. It's, and also, uh, you know, since I'm here, I am with my two grandchild. Yeah. And um, I don't see them, you know, as often as I would love, but, you know, uh, I, I'm seeing them once a year. This is very nice. And I just saw that kids are losing the imagination. And, you know, by doing all this with the iPad or the TV or the iPad or whatever, it's killing the brain and it's so bad. Remember when we were kids, I don't know, but I use, I see a tree. I, I was like a, almost a tomboy, you know? Me too. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Hanging off those. Climbing up the tree. Yeah. Now this uh, thing, I went up the cherry trip to get some cherry on the top. And, you know, it's how we can play with nothing. And this is the beauty of, of kids. And it's how to, as a parents or grandparents, it's to give them the attention and do something with them. They, they really need um, attention and discipline and the discipline is quite hard late, lately because it's easy to bring a kid in front of the tv because probably after a day of working and everything yeah. oh, the father of the father whatever whoever want to get some rest and bringing a kids in front of the tv it's probably the most easy thing to do but it's the worst thing to do to a kid because it's killing his imagination you know it's really killing the imagination, unless it's a very uh, program for, for kids. But TV, uh, you know. You're right. You're absolutely right. And, you know, I see that with uh, one, of my, one of my daughters is very addicted. Yes. But, and I've never seen anything like it. It's frightening. And the poor thing, like she, she's like, it, it, it's affecting her well-being. And she loves it so much that she she'll she'll go in the middle of the night <laughs> and find one so that she like somebody because she's not you know she's not allowed. Yeah. And, uh, a few times we had to shut the Wi-Fi right off in the house at night because like she couldn't even trust herself to not do it. So the uh, and having to explain to her that these games they they're meant to addict you. They're meant to to pull you in like this. So they've done their they've done the, their job, you know, and um, it, it's quite sad. I know um, one of the cartoons that she was watching. The characters are fabulous looking. The music was great. So I wasn't really paying attention except for kind of to that, but she was enjoying it. Well, one day, all of a sudden, I'm watching, and and it's a Russian roulette between the four four. Russian roulette. The one picked its gun up and blew the other one's head off, and the other one picked its gun up, blew the other. I was like, okay, hang on a second. What is happening here? What is the show? It, and it's it's like dark and and here it's all covered with music and pretty little dolls or whatever you know characters. And I, I was I was sick. Mm. <laughs> sick. It because you know she they had her and I you know we're watching well, I had no idea it was like I wasn't watching the show because they're on their own little devices yeah. you know when you watch it on the tv you're watching kind of as a family so I don't know you're you're so you're so right with this it's uh it's a problem it's, it's a big problem and you know in um uh, coming here, it's a different culture, you know, in America, very different from where I live in France. I bet. And <laughs> you really probably notice it. I, I don't want to judge or anything, but I can see the difference of living. Uh, in America, we are really in a big uh, consummation uh, world. Yeah, big time, big, big time. And 
where where I am. It's you know, first of all, we don't uh, I don't put any TV. There is no TV in the center. You know, they're all uh, <laughs> they're all uh, better. Just ruin it. It would just ruin it right there, wouldn't it? Yeah. And uh, you know, even with waves, <laughs> you know. Uh, um, you know, probably next year I don't want to have any uh, uh, only in you know, one part of the bed and breakfast there will there will be uh, internet, but in the rooms I don't want to have the waves. You know, uh, yeah, you know, but it's it's just because I think we need to be healthy, and uh, there is a way to be healthy, and we can. It's very uh, we can be healthy. Yes. And if uh, my grandchild, you know, uh, is addicted to TV, you know, why, you know, there is addiction to smoking, to drugs, to alcohol, but TV, it's a huge addiction. Yeah. And kids has been brought with that. And this is so sad. This is very sad because uh, the effect now is on kids of six years old, you know? And we need to, as a parents, what it is to take five minutes of our time during the day and at bedtime to read a story or to, you know, I think it's very important to raise a kid. Uh, you know, we are in the world that we are now with the COVID, you know, with the mask and everything, we are in a world of separation. So we need to be really get closer to our kids or grandchild or family, you know, uh, and talk and converse, share, you know, because soon we are going to put a mask so we not talk at all. So yes. we right. need to <laughs> consciousness we really need to change our consciousness and to take the time to to bring that uh, you know the old-fashioned probably to take a book and and just take the time to read or to sing or uh, I don't know to 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 do to to do something that yeah. we don't we are not used to do anymore but we need to get out of the old fashioned self. Yes, the patterns. I, I know that's really what, what I've been really working through and working on and being able to finally see for my own patterns. But it, it's, uh, yeah, it, 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 to create some new patterns because we just, we're going, um, we're doing these things, like you say, right? We're not even, we're just like a, like a robot, right? You get up and you do this. You do, we're doing it, uh, what is the word, automatically, yes. right? But the, we're not conscious of it. We're just getting up, we do the same thing. Do, 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 do. And many times I'll find myself now kind of all of a sudden walking in and, and all of a sudden I'll be in a state and I'll be like, the heck, what <laughs> just... Oh, I guess we and off you go into your unconscious pattern of whatever I saw growing up. Um, it, it's 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 a big thing what you're talking about. I think that uh, more than ever that this is this is probably one of the most important things right now. Right, is coming together and and okay. being there, actually yeah. really being there, and and to raise up our imagination. We need to uh, imagine, you know, like to dream. And this is Christmas, so it's a beautiful time of the year to create stories, new story, and uh, to believe, you know, in in uh, in other uh, another way to to live. And not only the kids, but us. We need to believe that there is a better world, and how we imagine that better world, you know how we see, what can we do in my life? How can I change and how, what, how do I see? Uh, what do I want? Yes. What that was the question I was like, what do I want? Okay, it's my turn. Like, it's like, 
I don't know. Do you know what I mean? It's like, because you're always, as a mom, looking after everybody else. And yeah, the time, to, just taking that time to, I, I don't think that I have really done that for so many years. Like, just imagine, just closing your eyes and but that's how you create your future. Yes. It, well, if you want to create your future or you stay in the pattern and, and you go off on that, right? Which I'm done with that. It's not working for me. <laughs> the pattern just keeps bringing way too much, uh, way too much contrast. <laughs> so time, time to wake up and pull up out of the pattern and start being being diligent and, and not well, diligent. But I have, if it's not a habit to, to create it to be a habit now, yeah. right? And so I have to be diligent to spend time to, to do these things, to meditate and to take time for myself and to, to use my imagination. Because you're right, like this is such a huge gift. And I just see you, like you just animate as soon as you talk about it, right? And like, this is our gift that we all have. And I don't know that many of us are, we're not taking the time probably, right? Yes, because it's going so fast. Yes. That's why it's really takes the time during the day and said, okay, how, what if, imagine if, you know, imagine if, if, uh, I don't know. What, something good instead of something horrible. <laughs> Imagine him, right? Everyone wants to go tell the, the bad story, right? Imagine him. Imagine if something really amazing, right? Imagine. Um, you know, yesterday my daughter did a Thanksgiving dinner with a friend and the two kids. And the kids, uh, so there was no TV. <laughs> and I gave some, um, a lot of uh, uh, pens, pencil and everything. And the little boy, he came back to, and he showed me his paint, his uh, draw. And on his draw, imagine that it was written. And I even took it in picture. Yes. It was written, believe. It was beautiful. I said, you know what? This is the most, and I don't know if I can, I don't know if it's. Yeah. Oh, look at that. He designed this and he's like, what, six years old? You know what? Look at that. The fact it was believe. I said, God, this is amazing. I love, and I love believe. I always tell my family, right? Especially at Christmas time, if you don't believe, you do not receive. So, you know, it's just the way it is. I don't want to hear one thing about Santa or, right? It's like God, right? If you see God, no, but everybody believes in God. So, Santa is the same thing. And if you don't believe, then you don't receive. He doesn't go. <laughs> so, uh, but, but, you know, because belief is like, Gratitude. Your belief is gratitude. Ask and yes. receive, right? Oh, but you have to act as though you already have. Yes. I read a quote. I wrote it in my mirror yesterday. Um, the ego's favorite game is to play um, seek and do not find. Right? Because when you're seeking something, it means then you're telling the universe that you don't have it. That's and true. so you continuously are seeking it and you get to continuously get to seek and seek and seek but when you ask and you believe exactly. it's given even though you don't see it in front of you right at this moment yes ask you know knock and will then the door will open for you ask and you receive yes and if you believe <laughs> No, I think you. I think you do receive, anyways. But you, you, you receive so you can manifest, you know, instantaneously when you have faith in what you know. Like with you, I you knew you were. It took you a few days because you were moving through a lot of energies outside that had a lot of uh, contrast, not letting you get to where you were going. But, but you and know that you knew you were getting there. Yeah, even though they were telling you you weren't. You know, it's to believe that we are not alone in that world. And there is, uh, you know, as you said, there is God, there is our uh, 
uh, I, I invoked or I, I, I believe in angels, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, archangel. And uh, when I have something, I always ask. I always ask them, uh, you know, this is my archetype, Archangel Michael, Michael, and the Virgin Mary, of course. Yeah. And uh, I always invoke them when there is something. Um, and uh, uh, le- le- I said, we need, it's very important to ask them for help. And uh, because they are, they are here for us. Well, and they can't help you unless you ask, uh-huh. right? Because we, we all have free will, right? So I, I didn't grow up with any understanding of any religion whatsoever and kind of, um, you know, I'm still on a, a learning of the different religions. And, and it's interesting, right? That whole, that whole concept, but it is so, it is, it works, it's real. And it, you know, it, it's, I've experienced it many times just doing, you know, uh, the meditations and then, you know, it, like it, it's, anyways, it, it's very fun. And once you start to experience that you have this uniqueness and this, this we all have this, but you start to learn how, how to work it. It's, it's, you can't go back because it's just, it's magical. You, you really feel like, you know what? I am creating my life. And so if I thought all oh, this is not working and I don't, and I'm kind of like, well, then that's kind of got in my path. That was right. But if you can just step forth and, and with your vision and see it, you end up getting so much more. It's always better than I've ever, whatever I ask, I always end up with like, wow, I could never, I never thought it would be like, when I was asking that it would be like this. It always seems, yeah, but you have to ask so much to discover so much so much and we have not been teach the like this when we are when we were younger you know no, it's not it's not a society thing like it, the, the religions i've never even going to a friend's wedding because i had a uh, one of my boyfriends they were he was catholic and they went to the catholic school and um one of his best friends the girlfriend got pregnant, so there they were in grade 12 getting married. And um, well, I've never been in a Catholic church, and here I was, and don't take the bread, and then off he left. And I was like, I didn't know what was going on. It was very uncomfortable, right? Not a place, right? I didn't because I had no, no understanding of what was happening. And it's unfortunate that there are so many rules and that I did feel that uncomfortableness. And then Anyways, it, it wasn't a good experience for me. The, it, it just, it's like almost a seclusion. Like you have to, I don't know, like you're not on the inside. Like you're not a part of unless you do this, this, and this with all of the religions, right? Absolutely. So I think for me, um, I, you know, I still don't know them all, but I, I do know that there's uh, this divine consciousness going on and there's something that we're all connected to and we look like we're separate but we're not we're all this energy field is we're all interacting through and and connected to each other and I think just having the wisdom of people like yourself who've lived a life of experiencing it and moving through at a time when it was really not even talked about I think that it's a little more mainstream than it used to be, mm-hmm. but it's still not anywhere as where it should be. And that was kind of my intent with sharing the incredible people I've met and, and the healing modalities and, 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 and the experiences because just listening to your story can help people just click in and go, hey, that, yeah, they resonate with that, right? Because we're all the same. We're all the same. We're all doing the same thing. We just have a different story. <laughs> some of us are doing it really well, and some of us aren't. <laughs> Absolutely. The, the, world, the, the world is in transformation. We are in transformation. 
And you know, you said that uh, uh, life can be magical. And wherever you put your attention, you know that the energy is going. And when you put your attention on uh, your, you know, uh, archetype, or you put your attention on uh, beautiful things in life, of course it will grow. So we have two choices in that living time. Where are we putting our attention? Are we putting our attention on beautiful things, on love and everything? Or are we putting our attention on the COVID? And things and will, will give him so much importance. So I think it's now time to really say, okay, I want to put my attention on everything who is going to make me grow and make grow love, you know? So what can I do to love? Learn how to love myself, learn how to love others. Well, I think uh, that self-love thing is, is the key, right? Yes. Because uh, yes. we're not loving ourselves, we're not able to, we don't have that foundation to know how to love properly, yeah. to, to allow. And love, love, for me, love is not a state. Uh, um, how do you say that? Um, the name in English. Love is love. There is love with relationship and everything, which is very different. It's the, it's a, a state of mind, you know. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah? Perception and, and and how people are perceiving touch with internet in unconditional in love. Yeah. Unconditional love is like an infinity of um, state of mind, you know. And we need, you know, respect, be faithful, being, you know, there is so many state of mind, you know, to listen to people, uh, to have acceptation. And now we are in a, in a time of the, uh, to accept, you know, yeah. accept what is happening, you know, and to surrender. So this is all about love, intuition, creativity, imagination, you know, compassion, uh, 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 serenity, harmony. So this is all about love. So put, let's put our attention on every aspect, like a diamond of love, what represents love. And we'll be, we'll be able to raise up our consciousness. And if we think, if we observe, if we see that we are in the old self of anger or doubt or culpability, frustration, irritation, or fear, whatever, let's switch right away because we have that possibility to switch right away, like on and off the light. We have that possibility. Everybody yeah. has that possibility. Power of choice. It's what we have, right? We have the choice. You know. Love or fear? Yeah. The fear comes, the jealousy, the yuckies, the heavy, the right. So you can choose those thoughts or you can choose the amazing list that you just gave us. Exactly. Right. Yes. You know, it's just it's here. It's way up there, right? So, and this way we have to be we have to be mindful to do that, right? All we yeah. need is love. Um, tell me, what would your 20 year old self, if you had advice to give to somebody, what would you tell your 20 year old self to do? Looking back. Uh, sorry, it's. Can you repeat, uh, Jackie? Oh, we have an internet. So if you were to give your, your 20 year old self some advice, what would that be? Breathe. <laughs> <laughs> breathe. breathe inhale and exhale just before uh, acting just before thinking of something you know just you know and uh, listen inhale exhale listen and be love love 
learn to love. And love is all about everything I said before, Accept acceptation, you know, surrendering. That's beautiful. But really, it will be like, uh, and takes the time, takes the time to be. To be. To be. be present, be present with your loved ones, be present for yourself. Yes. Yeah. And it's challenging. I, I mean, I'm looking at it every day and I find myself still doing that. Shh, shh, busy, 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 busy. Yeah. What can I do to help you? What can I do to help you? You know? Yeah. This is the most beautiful. I find this is the most beautiful question we can ask to to a relative, to a friend, to a family. What you don't do that too often, do you? <laughs> what can I do to help you? <laughs> I was like, I love that. <laughs> Let's use that a little more. <laughs> what can I do to help you? You know? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Imagine, you know, tomorrow you get up and you go and see your friend and say, what can I do to help you? Hmm? we keep getting that little bit of an internet connection coming in and out i apologize for that love um so when is your next book coming in fact i published my my last book was published in uh, uh two three years ago and uh, it's uh, poems in french it's very hard to translate it in english yes. so um it's um, uh, au cœur de vie, uh, in the heart of life. Nice. And it's all about initiative poems to reach and elevate our consciousness. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, it's it's uh, initiative uh, poems, and uh, uh, I have. Uh, a few as a book coming on the, on the way. <laughs> that I had a feeling there was one coming. I, yeah, there's just so much in there right now that's bubbling that uh, there has to be one that's coming out right now. I just feel it. <laughs> there is a lot of things. Well, I, yeah, I cannot talk about it yet. That's okay. Yes. That's okay. Will you come back and uh, visit me and talk about it when when it uh, is ready to come out? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like uh, 2021, you know, uh, it's going to be really an amazing year because I feel that too. everybody will not be the same. We are going to raise up our energy. Uh, we'll not see the world as we used to see it. And uh, there will be um, really um, we'll, we will put on the side what it's not working anymore for us, you know, what it's not serving me. In fact, that will be also a nice question. What is not serving me? I put it on the side. So if it's not serving me, what is serving me? Oh. I think everything is about service. How can I help? It's a service to be at the service of somebody else. Do you know what? That's when your life works. When you're when you're when you are lifting another, when you're holding space of love for another, there's the gift becomes yours. Absolutely. You know, and, and it's uh yeah, the gift is in the giving. And, you know, that, that, that the lesson is learning to make sure that you still know how to receive, <laughs> right? Because it's easier to give. But I know when we're younger, it's easier to take. <laughs> That's for me, right? Yeah. But uh, yeah, the gift is in the giving, loving and supporting. And yeah, it's everything. That's Absolutely. where the good stuff is yeah it's like when you are you know when a person uh, is you know um how do I say that? when my mom passed away 
I had uh, my my father had a very hard time, oh, yeah. and um, it took uh, two years, and you know nobody wanted to be with him because he he was very strange, but whatever. I believe in love, and that love will cure everything. And I I told him many times to to see if there is somebody who will need him. You know, is there in his relationship, people who need his help. And yes. in fact, it's cue his grief when he was starting to help others. Yes, it is, it, that's the gift, you know. Uh, yeah. Excuse me, yeah, just, it, uh, me on my healing journey, right? I know that for me, Exactly. that this is my gift, right? To be able to have this conversation and to bring your wisdom to others that are ready to hear and, you know, know about something else. It's like, it's just, what a gift. Because you you know, know. If we changed one person, if one person listened today, that's it. I, I mean, it would change, if, if you could change one person's life, if somebody was ready to hear something, that you had to offer today. And even just the fact that you're putting the conversation out there of love, mm -hmm. passion, and imagination and creating, that energy now is out there, right? And it's important, it's important to talk about this and to and to bring, you know, the healers and the healing and stuff to to our awareness back into the port like to the forefront especially right now right exactly yeah. Yeah. yeah well i don't know how long i've had you here because i've just like lost in my conversation enjoying seeing you you're such a beautiful beautiful being and uh i miss you and thank you okay. thank you from the bottom of my heart for coming and doing this with me thank you i thank really you. appreciate it thank you yeah I, uh, do you have anything else that you want to share? You know, I think that uh, the, the fact that you are doing all this, it's, uh, it's a beauty. It's a, it's a chance for the one you interview to share and to, um, to, yes, to share and also for you. So it's like in, uh -huh. in an excelling for the world. You know, so yeah. very it kind of reminds me of you sharing about your book with the elderly, right? Like it, it's just sharing that with people. It, it, that's the gift. That's such a gift. It's a gift all the way around, right? Yes. So. And always share beautiful things. Share the good stuff. Yeah. Leave leave the horror stories behind. <laughs> share, share the lesson you learn from the stories. Yes. Yeah, yeah, share the lesson. Yeah, share the lesson. But detached from the emotion, right? Yes. Exactly. Back into the, which I think, you know, was a great pastime for many years, right? Yes. <laughs> to drop into the drama of what happened and this happened, right? Exactly. Yeah, anyways. And share, and, you know, really, how, what can I do to help you? You know? What can I do to help you? I love it. Oh, yeah. But uh, thank you very much. It's, it's been such a pleasure uh, to, to be here. Uh, you invite me and I'm really, really uh, touched by this, you know. Oh. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing you. Good, I'm looking forward to seeing you. I'm looking forward to coming to your house. <laughs> I really, really am. And I'm going to put your... Um, uh, with our podcast, I'm going to put your information for the people that are watching and listening so that they can know how to get to contact you for your wellness center in France. Like, hello. That's so Just eating the food when I came back and, and back into Canada eating, my whole dietary system was so good when I was in Europe. It's just bizarre to me that I could come here and eat the same thing. Well, not the same thing, but 
and my whole body is different. Mm -hmm. What is that? Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, there's a real, there's really quite something special over there. So I, I'm coming. <laughs> and uh, hopefully many more are going to come see you too. You've got uh, so much to give and so much to share. It's, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I um, will keep in touch. Yes. Yeah. I'm looking forward to uh, seeing you again, even if I don't see you physically, you know. I know, it's lovely that we have this technology for this, right? At this point in time. Uh, in fact, this is what brings us also closer, you know, closer yeah. together. You know, we've been creating even more, uh, some, you know, the technology is a good thing also because we can communicate and see each other. So this is- a good and bad with everything, right? Yes, exactly. So this is a beautiful thing, you know. Uh, so we'll focus on the good stuff. Yes, absolutely. Always focus on the good thing. Thank you. And I hope your audience will get imagination and stuff for Christmas. We're going to dream up an amazing, wonderful Christmas. Believe, 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 believe. <laughs> I believe. Yes, and I hope your audience will uh, love all this and they will get, uh, even if it's few words, you know. That's right. That's let's right. This and let's catch that. That's right. And, and we'll get, and, 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 and when, uh, when I visit with you again, we'll have, there's so much more of your life that we haven't even touched on that is so worth sharing. So um, till the next time. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Have a wonderful um, not even, yeah, evening at your place. <laughs> okay, <bye. laughs> I get in touch with you in the next few days.